tende domine, et miserere, qui ape cavimus tibi. Jesus, our Savior, Lord of all the nations, Christ our Redeemer, we offer. Spare us and save us. Comfort us in sorrow. Attende Domine et miserere qui peccavimus tibi. of the Father, keystone of God's building, source of our gladness, gateway to the kingdom, free us in mercy from the chains that bind us. Attende Domine, et miserere, qui peccavimus tibi. God of compassion, Lord of might and splendor, graciously listen. Of anguish, touch us and heal us where our sins have wounded. Attende Domine et miserere, qui peccavimus tibi. Humbly confessing that we have offended, stripped of illusions, naked in our sorrow, pardon, Lord Jesus, those your blood has ransomed. Attende Domine, et miserere, qui peccavimus tibi. Innocent captive, you were led to slaughter, sentenced by sinners when they brought false witness, keep from damnation those your death has rescued. Attende Domine et miserere, qui peccavimus Good evening and welcome to St. John's. Let us begin in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you. May all of our actions bring you praise in a special way today. We pray for the parish of St. John the Baptist for whom this Mass is being offered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John the Baptist. Pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Come, O oh God, renew your people, we who long to see your face. Straight 
strengthen hearts that have grown feeble. Fill our lives with truth and grace. Only you can win our freedom. Only you can bring us peace. Only in the cross of Jesus will the captives find relief. Deep within, create a new heart. Melt away the winter chill. Help us now to make a new start. Help us now to know your will. Washed in waters of forgiveness. Cleansed in waters of new birth. Lead us to the cross of Jesus, bringing life to all the earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to enter into uh, this season of Lent, you'll notice uh, during the Mass that there's uh, more silence, uh, there's more opportunity uh, for that, that silent prayer. Even the music is more uh, subdued. Another thing that we do during Lent is we uh, change up the penitential act. Uh, and so I will say, as I do every uh, Lent when it comes to the penitential act, I will say, have mercy on us, Lord, and you will say, for we have sinned against you. Then I'll say, show us, O Lord, your mercy, and you're going to say, and grant us your salvation. Also during Lent, you'll notice that there is no, uh, there's no gloria. Instead, it's just once again an opportunity uh, to, to repent and, uh, and believe in the gospel, as we'll hear about today, uh, in the gospel uh, from Jesus. And so, let us enter into this uh, sacred time. Let us enter into this Mass by acknowledging our sins and so, in, uh, so, and so preparing to receive uh, these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between you and me 
and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall my covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sin once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient. While God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Every year as we begin Lent, we always start with the account of Jesus' temptation in the desert. And it's all, and it's in all, all three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Of course, today's account from Mark, which is a common occurrence, is the shortest account. But it's still very powerful, and it's, it's right uh, to, to the point. But why does the church always begin with the temptation of Jesus in the desert to begin Lent. I think we can probably see one of the reasons is because we hear of that Jesus is there for 40 days. When we think of the number 40 in scriptures, of course, we think of two main things. We think of Noah and the flood for 40 days, which we're hearing about today in our first reading, and we also think as well of the Israelites who are in the desert for 40 years. A side note here, by the way, before I continue, is remember that Lent is really set up for catechumens, those who are preparing to enter into the Catholic faith uh, either through baptism or through confirmation. And so throughout all of Lent, we're going to hear these, these very popular stories that maybe we know really well, but it's important that we place our, ourself uh, with those who are going through the RCIA process. And what you'll see, at least in the Old Testament, is kind of the story of salvation history. And what you'll see in the Gospel accounts is once again the story of salvation, of, of repentance, and also Jesus being the fulfillment of of the Old Testament. And so we see it today. Noah, of course, in the, in the flood, those 40 days, and why was there a flood? Well, because the earth had to be cleansed. It was full of sin. Of course, then we have the 40 years of the, of the Israelites who are escaping out of Egypt, and they're in the desert. The desert, of course, is uh, where essentially Adam and Eve were abandoned to uh, as, as well. But it's this Passover that has happened, and now this, this 40 years going to the promised land. And so then there is Jesus in the desert who is tempted for 40 days. Tempted in the same way that we know that Adam and Eve were tempted uh, in, the, in the garden, as well as uh, tempted of other people as well. 
of the Egyptians themselves, not the Egyptians, the Israelites, who gave into temptation as they were in the desert. Uh, we see this. Here they are after the Passover. And what do they do? They start worshiping false gods. Even Moses himself gives into temptation. But who does not? Jesus Christ. He enters into this spiritual warfare with the evil one, and he is the victor. He is the victor. He's able to overcome. And at the end, of course, uh, we know that after he was among the wild beasts and all this, the angels ministered to him. Uh, they gave him food, and then he went off and said, repent and believe in the gospel. What else happens for 40 days, by the way? Lent. Lent happens for 40 days as well. And just like Jesus, we too are entering into a spiritual warfare. We literally are. We are, we are going into battle so that we may encounter Christ even more. And so that's why we take up, as we heard about, maybe you came to Ash Wednesday Mass, we take up those weapons of, of prayer, of, of fasting, and of almsgiving. And we do this every year. Every year we have Lent, maybe on a different date, but it's always somewhere in the winter and the spring, and it's always that preparation for Easter. And so it's almost like every single year we march into battle because Lent can be a great battle, the battle between you and temptation, whatever that temptation may be. And sometimes that temptation is to break our Lenten promises. You know, once again, as I've mentioned before, maybe you're, maybe you're fasting from, from chocolate. And so all through Lent, you have that battle not to give in. And sometimes you may wonder yourself, why do I do this every year? It's always so hard. Well, the reason why is because hopefully when it comes to Easter, we realize it was all worth it. Because in giving something up and spending more time in prayer and giving more of ourself, we've been able to encounter Christ even more. And so we do this every year because it's worth it. It reminds me of a movie that I, that I saw back in, it came out in 2005. It wasn't even a movie, it was a documentary. And I think most of you probably, hopefully have seen it. If not, I strongly encourage it. It's the, the movie, the documentary, The March of the Penguins. And it's a beautiful documentary about these penguins in Antarctica. You know, every single year, they have to go on a march. And one of the reasons the movie's so good is because Morgan Freeman's the narrator. And let's be honest, we can listen to anything that he says, right? Uh, but it's a beautiful documentary which tells a story of the emperor penguins. And every single year when it comes to right around March, uh, they emerge from the sea, and they march, sometimes up to 70 miles. Imagine a penguin marching, right, for 70 miles. And they go to a place of the iceberg in Antarctica where they know the ice sheet is not going to melt. And so they have to march all the way to the inner part of, of this uh, ice sheet. And then it's protected by mountains and everything else. And they, they get there after this march, both the, the males and the females. And if you've seen the movie, you, you know it's some beautiful uh, images. And sure enough, the male and the female find a partner and they, they mate. And then eventually the, the female uh, produces uh, the egg. And as soon as, it, and it's a couple months later already, and as soon as this happens, the male takes over uh, the egg and sore enough, sits on the egg, and the female has to go marching. And she marches all the way back. And this time, she's lost 30% of her body weight. She marches back to the sea, which is even farther out now, because it's near, uh, it's, it's just continuing to get colder uh, and colder in the winter down there. And so she marches, and meanwhile, the male protects the egg. And she goes out there, she feeds, and she replenishes all the food that she needs. 
and she marches back. She marches back, and this time it's even colder. But there's a sense of urgency because her chick needs food. And the male himself now is down to 50% of his body weight. And sure enough, hopefully the female makes it back and the chick has not passed away. And as soon as the female makes it back, the male goes marching back to the sea. And now, because of this, only 50% of his body weight, there's a reason there's fewer male than female penguins, because more of the males will pass away. But they get back to the sea. They too replenish, and they go marching back. And this happens over and over again, over a nine-month period. Eventually, it gets better, and eventually the sea comes right to the breeding grounds. But they do this every year. They go into this march. And as Morgan Freeman says, this is not a movie about survival. This is a movie about love. Lent is not about survival. Lent is about love. And we do it every year. We go on this march. We go into this spiritual battle. Why? So that we may experience God even more. We don't give up. We don't say, ah, this year, you know, I tried. I made it three days. I'm good. No, 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 no. We continue. We persevere. And I know it sounds silly. It really does. I know it. But we have to have that same perseverance that these penguins have. Why? Because it's worth it. And it's life-giving. What we want to do is experience all the graces that God wants to give us. And so we do this every year because it's almost like this time for this purifying of our life that maybe we've fallen away a little bit uh, from, from the faith. Maybe we've fallen a little bit away from from God. Maybe it's just been way too difficult to veer and we've gone back into some old bad vices, some old bad habits. This is the time to be purified, to enter into uh, the spiritual warfare. And by the way, we know that just because we enter into this does not mean that temptations are not going to happen. They will. The evil one knows. He does. He knows when we want to turn closer to God. And he's going to try to get you. He's going to try uh, to, to get us. This, is, this happens. We've all experienced it, hopefully, in our own life. When we've tried to go closer to God, it seems like the temptations get even bigger. Of course, we know the book, hopefully you've read it or heard about it, Screw Tape Letters, right? The evil one wants to get us. But instead, we enter into this battle and we say, no, 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 this year, I'm going to continue to repent. I'm going to continue to turn back to the Lord. That's what repent means. I'm going to believe in the gospel, and the gospel is what? The good news of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to march into this battle. I'm going to persevere, and I'm going to receive all of the love that God wants to give me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. 
through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And knowing that God hears the prayers of his children, we come before our Heavenly Father with these, our prayers. That the church may show the world the way to God through repentance and prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may work together to seek peace and justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as God made a covenant with all living things, so we, his people, may grow in our respect for life and actively protect it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may partner with fellow Catholics to share Christ's love with neighbors in need through ministries that serve the poor, support life, and strengthen the faith via the Catholic Services Appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus and for those suffering from illness and old age, that they may have gentle caregivers to attend them and ease their pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that those who have died, especially Barbara Carlson, mother of Colleen Bador, may rest in the loving presence of the saints and the angels. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are all good and knowing of all of our needs. Please hear the prayers we make before you today and help us to persevere as we enter into the season of Lent. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for vocations. O oh God, God, we earnestly ask you, to bless this archdiocese with many priests, brothers, and sisters who will love you with their whole strength and gladly spend their entire lives to serve your church and to make you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us, pray for our priests, religious, and deacons, obtain for us many more. Shelter me, O oh God, hide me in the shadow of your wings. You alone are my home. When my foes surround me, set me
Shelter me, O God, hide me in the shadow of your wings. You alone are my home. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice. So that celebrating worthy the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncele et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, Though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he too was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, 
He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in the communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant bishop, Andrew, help us to work together for the coming of, of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with the blessed apostle, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolles peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given, we eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Break now the bread of Christ's sacrifice. Giving thanks, hungry ones gather round. Eat all of you and be satisfied. In Christ's presence, the loves will abound. Bread of life from heaven, your And 
until you come again. Seek not the food that will pass away. Set your hearts on the food that endures. Come learn the true and the living way that the fullness of life may be yours. Bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until Love as the one who in love with you gave himself for the life of the world. Come to the one who is food for you that your hunger and thirst be no more. Bread. Your blood and body given, we eat this bread and drink this cup until you come again. Take in the light that will never dim, taste the life that is strong. And then raise you up at the last with the blessed bread of life from heaven, your blood and body given. We eat this bread and drink this cup until. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son Let us pray.
renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live, live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people. That hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to share the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Say